That is, when they object, when they complain, when they cry, saying that how would we be able to taste the forms of worship we're offering to Allah Azza wa Jal? How would it be a comfort to our souls and hearts? How can we reach the level that whenever we have a calamity, whenever we have a problem, we find our comfort in these forms of worship? Didn't the Prophet ﷺ say that Allah had made my satisfaction in prayer? Didn't Bilal say, the Prophet used to say والسلام, comfort us Bilal with prayer, meaning call for the prayer. And did it Aisha say, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he had a calamity, whenever he had something that was bothering him, he would go and rush to pray? So people complain. How can we attain this submissiveness? How can we get this level of contemplation and of having the heart standing in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? Well, the Prophet ﷺ has showed us the way. And among the things that he had showed us is this beautiful hadith. Indeed, if a person was blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal to have these qualities in him, indeed he is blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, there are three qualities for which whoever is characterized by them will relish the sweetness of faith. To love Allah and his messenger more than anything else. That's number one. To love someone only for the sake of Allah. That's number two. And to abhor returning to apostasy after Allah has rescued him from it as he abhors being cast into hell. Three qualities and each one is more beautiful than the other. The first one is to love Allah and the Prophet ﷺ more than anything else. And one would claim that we all have this in us, but we don't find the taste of the sweetness of Iman. Well, let's go back to finding the sweetness of Iman or, or relishing the sweetness of faith. Is this metaphoric or is it actual taste of sweetness that you find. Scholars differed, but the most authentic opinion is that this is an actual real taste of faith, the sweetness of Iman. And that is exactly as people find the sweetness of honey, the sweetness of sugar or dates when they eat them, likewise, those who believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, and those who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than anything else, would find the sweetness of the belief in their heart. To the extent that nothing harms them, no calamities, no abuse, no torture, no poverty, no illness, Nothing affects their Iman. It was reported once that a man passed by a crippled person who had no arms and no legs and he was just a body without any limbs. And he heard him say, Oh Allah, praise be to you. You have blessed me with things much more greater than what you have blessed a lot of the people. And the man came up to him and said, I could not get what you were saying. What blessing are you talking about? You have no legs and no hands. What blessings do you think that Allah has given to you and favored you with more than a lot of the, uh, a lot of the people in general? And the man said, poor person speaking to me, I feel sorry for you. Don't you realize the favor of Allah upon me that he had given me a thankful heart and a grateful tongue? This is one of the greatest gifts of Allah to an individual, 
to feel always that he's favored by Allah Azza wa Jal. While on the other hand, you'd find a lot of rich people, people who have everything, health, wealth, they have power, they have everything anyone could hope and wish for, yet they're always miserable. They're all, they are always ungrateful. Whenever you see someone and you say, how are you? How's life to you? He starts listing a whole bunch of things that he's complaining of. Inflation is too high. Things are too expensive. The kids are driving me crazy. The missus is buying everything. I'm wasting my, one, my money on things that are worthless. I've lost my money in the stock market. I did this. I did that. And after he complains about the electricity, the water, the infrastructure, about everything, the climate, the weather, the color of his skin, after all of that, then he says, but, alhamdulillah, I am favored and blessed by Allah. What kind of favor and blessing are you talking about? See, the people are unable to find the sweetness of faith because they favor everything over Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the believers, the true believers, you would find them tasting their prayers. Not actually putting it in their mouths and tasting it, but when they pray and conclude their prayer, they feel that they've been in heaven. When they fast while it's hot and they're thirsty and hungry, yet when they break their fast, they feel the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. When they give money for charity, though their credit is a little bit lower than before, yet they know that at the side of Allah, it is far, far greater and higher than it was before. So whatever they do, they find to these forms of worship a better taste than the taste of honey, sugar, or dates. This sweetness is actual. When they listen to the Qur'an, they are enjoying listening to the Qur'an. When they listen to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, you find tears in their eyes, but they are not crying out of pain or misery. They are crying out of happiness. When they hear a lecture reminding them of Allah, making them get closer to Allah, the Almighty, you find them actually tasting the sweetness of Iman. And they are in more joy and happiness than those who are listening to things that Allah does not approve of. For example, if you look at the people of sin, what do they enjoy most? They enjoy a concert. They enjoy a play in a theater. They enjoy a movie. They enjoy a song, an album, music. They like fornicating. They like consuming intoxicants and getting wasted. All of these things do not come even close to the sweetness of the believers when they taste the sweetness of Iman. Wallah, when they listen to the Qur'an, they find the tranquility and calmness of the whole universe in their hearts. But, on the contrary, when they hear something that is related to sin, when they hear some music, you find them finding the bitterness, which is the opposite of sweetness, in their hearts. Why is that? Don't they enjoy music? Don't they enjoy songs? Don't they enjoy movies? No, they don't. Simply because they've tasted the sweetness of faith and that, it, that made everything else so bitter in their hearts. It is like when someone finds it difficult to pray. He struggles to pray, but after a while, once he got, gets to know his prayer by Allah, he finds himself driven to prayer and he enjoys it more than anything else. A beautiful hadith. The believers found the taste of Iman not only in forms of worship, but also in different kinds of 
good deeds, in teaching people. When you hear about what the scholars did for the sake of Allah, when you hear about the books that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, wrote not in his house, but in prison, when he did not have means to write on, he did not have pens, he did not have paper, he could beg the guards for a piece of coal so that he could write whatever he can on pieces of papers. And nobody is asking him or forcing him to do so. But he found the sweetness of faith in recording this great knowledge of his so that it would stay after his death and we would benefit from it. Unfortunately, everyone claims of us that he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than anything else. Everyone of us claims that he loves Allah more than anything else. But this claim needs verification. You have to verify this. How can I increase my Iman? Well, this is not something that I could prescribe a pill for you or an injection and then, mashallah, it would boost your Iman. It's a way of life. To increase your Iman, as Ahl-Sunnah believe, you have to offer good deeds. And you have to stay and refrain from bad deeds. And it would happen by itself. The minute you pray on time, the minute you pray where you're supposed to pray in the masjid, not one, one prayer, but the five daily prayers, on time in the masjid as Allah has prescribed. The minute you obey your parents and you respect them and you're kind to them, the minute you connect to your next of kin, those who are related to you from your father or from your mother's side, even if they are bad and rude to you, even if they sever the kinship, even if they don't return your calls, even if they don't answer your invitations, you still go and connect them. The minute you do this, the minute you fast Ramadan without sinning, the minute you offer night prayers, the minute you fast voluntary prayers, Monday, Thursdays, the white three days of every month, Ashura, Arafah, etc. The minute you give charity to the needy and the poor, the minute you help those who need your help, the minute you meet people with a big smile, though they might not share this kindness with you, but you still do it for the sake of Allah. The minute you do all of this for the sake of Allah, you will find that your Iman is increasing a lot. And also, if you were to stay away from sin, you will find that Allah Azza wa Jal is increasing your Iman greatly. Why? Because you're doing what you're supposed to do. And Allah rewards those who do what they're supposed to do. The terminology itself, they're similar and close. Hidayah in Arabic means guidance. And tawfiq in Arabic means that Allah would help you do something. Allah would make you successful in doing something. So they are similar, but they're separate. Guidance is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And guidance, as we know, is divided into two types. Guidance that only Allah has, which is to make people worship Him and to make people do good things. But there are, or there is a different type of guidance and that is, that is given to us as individuals, such as the guidance given to the Prophet Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And verily that you guide to a straight path. Now, the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ is showing you the direction, showing you the road. Whether you take it or not, this is not up to him ﷺ. It's up to Allah. If you take it, then this is the guidance from Allah. So the Prophet merely guides you to the direction. If you take it, this is guidance from Allah. And that is why when it came to his uncle Abu Talib, who died as a non-Muslim, the Prophet was sad about this. So Allah told him in the Quran, Inna kalata You do not guide those whom you love. 
meaning that you showed them the way, but you cannot do more than that, and the guidance is at the hands of Allah, the Almighty. If you look at the proof that proves that you love Allah and the Prophet more than anything else, you'd find that it's a very difficult way or thing to prove. Allah, the Almighty, says that the Jews claim that they are the sons of Allah and His beloved one. And also, Allah Azza wa Jal put to us a verse in the Quran that examines the authenticity of our love, where Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, say, if you love the Allah Azza wa Jal, then follow me, and Allah Azza wa Jal would love you. So, you have to prove your love to Allah Azza wa Jal by following the Prophet And everyone claims that he loves the Prophet Yet when you come to look at their actions, you'd find them far away from the Prophet's instructions. When you come to them and say, listen, the Prophet said that one of you would not truly believe until I'm more beloved to him than his child, his father, and all of the people. Are you like this? Well, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said to the Prophet O Prophet of Allah, you are more beloved to me than my child, than my father, than all the people except myself. And the Prophet told him والسلام, No, Umar, you will not attain the true degree and sweetness of faith until you love me more than even your soul. And Umar contemplated a bit and thought of it and said, yes, I would easily give my soul away. I would sacrifice myself for the sake of the Prophet and to protect him. So he came to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of Allah, by Allah, I love you more than anything else, even my soul. And up the Prophet said, Now, Umar, you have attained the true belief. So, let's look at ourselves through this hadith. Do we love the Prophet more than we love ourselves? More than we love our children and our fathers? Well, this is a claim that needs proof. When we find that the Prophet ﷺ instructed us and said, trim your mustache and let your beards grow. This is an order from the Prophet ﷺ. Do you believe that he had said it? He says, yes, I do. Is the hadith authentic? He said, definitely, it's in Bukhari and Muslim. So, do you love the Prophet ﷺ? He says, yes, I do. Then the question is asked, why don't you grow your beard? And this is one aspect. If you look at the women, why aren't you veiling? Why aren't you covering your faces? Why are you mixing with men? If you look at youngsters, why aren't you praying Fajr in the masjid as the Prophet ﷺ instructed you to do and told you that those who don't, they have characteristics of hypocrites. If you looked at Merchants and traders, why are you dealing in riba? Why are you taking interests? Why are you taking loans and paying interests when you know that this is one of the major sins of Islam? You have a lot and a lot of things that indicate that you are not a true person in your love to the Prophet or to Allah, the Almighty.